Welcome back. Uh, Tejas Networks uh, is the company that we are focusing on. Uh, the company, of course, uh, the stock price has done phenomenally well, especially after going into the fourth quarter results uh, and, of course, after that yesterday as well. So the result set was very strong and uh, revenues zoomed 343% on a year-on-year -year basis. It was up 137% sequentially. Uh, it's witnessed a strong order booking for the last three quarters. F524 has also been a milestone year for the company. Uh, we'll discuss some of this. Uh, at least we have Anand Atreya, Managing Director and CEO of the company. Uh, and in a bit from now, we'll also have the uh, CFO with us. So Anand, good morning. Great to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time, uh, Prashant, this side. Congratulations on a very strong set. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you post a quarter like what you did, uh, expectations go up uh, substantially. Uh, so uh, you're smiling, uh, but uh, let, let me ask you, what are you expecting to do in F525? I was looking at some of the street estimates, uh, Anand. In F524, revenues of, uh, have, you've done revenues of about 2,300 crores. I am looking at estimates for F526, uh, F525, beg your pardon, which are uh, in the vicinity of about 96, 9,700 crores. Uh, I mean, are those numbers uh, in the ballpark of what you would imagine be, you'd be able to do? Um, so good morning, Prashant, um, and thanks for uh, hosting us. Um, yes, it's been a good quarter and a good year, and it's been the best quarter ever for Tejas and the best year for Tejas, and it's a profitable one too. Um, yes, we uh, have strong revenue across all of our products, and you know the pipeline is healthy. Uh, and as you know, we don't give guidance on where we're going to end up. But I think we are insanely focused on execution and, uh, you know, building the pipeline. Is it possible? Uh, I mean, without going, going into specific numbers, and I'm not going to ask you or press you to give us a specific number for 25, but is 25 so, going to be a transformational year in that sense where, so, I mean, top line grows in multiples? Well, look, we have a healthy order uh, book already <coughs> in the back, uh, you know, and we are continuing to execute, uh, you know, flawlessly. Um, so, and then the result will take care of itself, right? What we are focused on is to ensure that we have a good order book and then we fulfill the order and we execute, oh. uh, you know, flawlessly. Okay. Uh, I want to also know a little more about, I mean, you said that you don't want to, you know, give out a, a guidance, but just to understand a little bit about the businesses, right? On the international front, there has been, a, the growth has been at a slower pace. So when do you see it pick up? And also, uh, if you look at the government-led business, the private-led business, can you give us some updates on what the growth could look like in FY25? So again, uh, we don't give guidance on growth, but all we can say is uh, we are investing uh, well to grow the international markets, which means uh, we are investing in sales uh, partnerships and other relationships. Uh, you know, um, as, as we announced recently, we actually signed uh, an MOU with the Telecom Egypt. Um, so uh, we are, uh, we would like to expand internationally. Uh, right now, it is a fraction because the local government, you know, the BSNL uh, dwarfs everything that, you know, we are doing, but our intention is to grow on all fronts. And so we when will you make the right investments to get there. Got it, got it. When you say you would like to expand further internationally, uh, currently the international business is, I think, 10% of your FY24 revenues. Uh, over the next couple of years, how much do you want to take it to? See, we want to get back to the healthy levels it used to be. We would be 40% uh, you know, in, in our previous uh, years. Um, you know, again, today uh, we have a huge, large wireless order deal that, is, that dwarfs everything. So if you look at the percentage basis, it is uh, you know, not a fair comparison at this point. But you know, like any healthy business, we want to get to a point where it, it's uh, you know, reasonably split. Okay, all right, uh, Anand, uh, thanks a lot for giving us some commentary. We have Arnab Roy as well, who joins us on the show, the CEO and ED of the company. Hi, Arnab, and welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for joining in. Well, explain this to us. The trade receivables had spiked up to around 1,500 crores from around 850 crores on a sequential basis. What led to this? Point number one. And point number two is growth is going to be very, very good. But some color on the margins, it's been hovering in low double digits. Should we work with that number as well going ahead? Yeah. So first of all, as far as the receivables are concerned, um, uh, you have to see the receivables in the context of the large uh, Q4 that we had. So since the revenue has happened, they have become receivables, but a large part of it is uh, not due yet because it is connected to the milestones. 
so in that context, I mean, um, and and the um, and the rest of it is um, just for a, a few months old. So there is no significant co any concern over there because uh, it has become come into the receivable floor because of the large Q, uh, Q4 and has to be seen in the context of that. Uh, from a margin point of view, as we had mentioned in Q3, that um, one of the reasons for the low margin was in, especially in the wireline segment, we had shipped some of the low component parts, uh, low margin parts of the network. And when we complete the shipment for the entire network, I mean, uh, the margin, the blended margin would recover. And that's what you have seen in terms of uh, margins improving uh, in Q4. Uh, going forward, I mean, while we don't give guidance on uh, margins, you have seen our historical margins in the past, um, uh, you know, where, um, you know, the margins were between 38 and 40%. So our, we target, we aspire to go towards that region and then uh, that's what our uh, target is. But uh, in general, we do not give any uh, guidance in terms of what our immediate margins are going to be. You know, on margins in the past, as you're saying, I'm just checking out, you're used to do mid-teens as well. EBITDA margins is what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, should, should, should that be the goal, mid-teens margins? I mean, that's what we aspire for. I mean, we cannot give a guidance right now, but that's what the aspiration, aspiration is in the, in the long term, in the steady stage. Mm -hmm. right? Anand, uh, when you were talking about that one large uh, order dominating your sort of uh, uh, book right now, that's the, that's the BSNL order, right? And and uh, that that will be uh, sort of executed, uh, the entirety of it will be executed in F525? Yeah. What is remaining? To, yeah, yeah, we expect to execute that uh, in F525. That's correct. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and, and would you want to put out some numbers in terms of what the sort of revenues from that would be? How much is remaining? Um, we have shipped around 10,000 sites. Um, I believe uh, it should be probably around six to 7,000 crores, uh, I don't know. Yeah, somewhere, total, somewhere in that ballpark. The yeah. total deal size is in that range. Total deal size. Okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so around 7,000 crores uh, over the next couple of quarters, right? Because you'll finish this in this, uh, this year. So that's the... That's well, the big bump. Financial year, financial year. Financial year, F525. No, F5 got 20. that. Uh, Anand, uh, just one more uh, point. Uh, the group itself, the Tata group itself is sort of, uh, uh, is sort of getting into the semiconductor space. And many are uh, wondering how Tejas Networks as a company will sort of fit in. What kind of opportunities do you, do you, do you see? I mean, the group chairman has been on the record to say that he's encouraging group companies to find synergies. Yeah. Uh, can you talk to us about that? Yeah, look, um, I think it's a massive effort by the Tata Group, and Chairman um, is, uh, you know, very involved in that. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from from Tejas' point of view, we, uh, you know, we acquired uh, this company called Sankhya Labs, uh, where mm -hmm. Sankhya does, uh, you know, their own <coughs> for some of the products. Um, so, I think we can explore synergies where, you know, we could probably look at. You know the group uh, even manufacturing this designing this as we go forward but again the details have to be worked out uh, you know we are working closely with the uh, the tata semiconductor group uh, on, on this yeah got it uh, arnab i wanted your thoughts on what the impact of the pli would be and manufacturing of telecom equipment i mean what is the kind of opportunity that you see because of a replacement right since so many are reducing chinese equipments uh, what is the kind of opportunity that you see for your own business yeah so uh, I think that is a big opportunity uh, in terms of replacing with uh, what we call uh, trusted equipment. Uh, that opportunity both not only in India but in a uh, lot of the foreign markets as well, where uh, you know those opportunities are there, and we are uh, targeting all of that. Uh, you know because products from India internationally also are also are considered as uh, you know trusted reliable equipment kind of thing. So, um, yes, that's a significant opportunity for us. As regards PLI, I think PLI is a really good in incentive for manufacturing investments. And we have been one of the um, applicants who have been approved. And, um, uh, you know, and our application and uh, uh, our, uh, you know, the, uh, our application for F523 as well as F524, you know, they have, um, you know, they have been approved. And so over the next, uh, it's for five years from FI23. So for the next four years, we see a significant, uh, you know, impact and value coming out of this PLI uh, scheme, which will, uh, which is connected to not only our investments in manufacturing, but also connected to the revenue growth that comes out of it. So it is indeed a 
good uh, shot in the arm for uh, domestic indigenous manufacturers in growing their manufacturing base. All right, uh, gentlemen, we leave it there. Uh, out of time, uh, but uh, not out of questions. Uh, hope we can speak again. Uh, Arnab and Anand, thank you very much for being here with us on CNBC TV 18 for this chat. Uh, post the F524 results. Good luck uh, to uh, Tejas Networks. Well, you know, you've got the market, uh, which is uh, up a little bit more from the last time we looked. It's up 90 points. So uh, right in the middle, midpoint of that range, uh, the resistance zone, 22,400 to 22,500 uh, broadly is what we're talking about. Uh, the mid-cap index is up a half a percent, uh, actually 0.6%. So like yesterday, the broader market's doing a little bit better. It's a wrap on this edition of Bazaar from all of us here. Goodbye. Thanks for staying with us. Chartbusters will pick up on all the action in just a bit.